Hello everyone, it's Jordan from Auto8 here again. Um, I'm going to be showing you guys today how to program a Hyundai uh, through J2534 or the aftermarket uh, J-Box. Um, sorry if there's a lot of background noise, I'm currently actually in a customer's shop right now. So uh, anyways, let's get started here. Um, so first what we're going to do is uh, we're going to have a look at um, the TSB for the uh, code that's sitting in this vehicle. Um, there is a there is a TSB stating a reflash, uh, and the reason we do that is because it usually tells you um, the calibration, uh, the old calibration ID, and then the new calibration ID, just to make sure there is an actual update available, uh, and then you compare that to the actual calibration ID in the vehicle uh, on the scan tool. Uh, the reason we do this first is because the subscription for these guys is like 75 bucks, so it's better to check before instead of uh, just going in blind, spending the 75 bucks to find out that uh, it's already been done previously. Um, so first we're gonna we're gonna open up Identifix here and uh, the code that's uh, showing up is a P0411 or sorry 441 It's actually first on the list there in top searches um, And there is a TSB for it. So we're gonna click on that Now we're gonna scroll down here and uh, on the bottom of the uh, TSBs here, you can see there's the old ROM ID here, and then the new one that's going to be put into it. Um, so with this vehicle, it is a um, FS model. That's the uh, the engine in this vehicle. Um, it is a 2013 with the uh, automatic dual clutch transmission. Uh, so we've got FS 2013 dual clutch transmission, um, and then it asks if it has an immobilizer system, um, either yes or no. Um, they're they're going to have an immobilizer system no matter what. They're just asking here whether it's got a blade key or the uh, smart system. And this vehicle has the smart system. So here are the um, the old calibrations that uh, the ECM may have, and this is the new one. So uh, we're going to have to go in and take a look and check uh, to see what the actual calibration is. And for that, you can use any scan tool, go under uh, ECM data, but uh, we're going to use the, um, the J2534 toolbox that came with our Cardac M. Uh, J box. So I'm just going to open this up here. Now, if you do have the uh, Cardac M and you're using this toolbox, you do need to be um, online to use it. And that number that's on the back that, that you're uh, putting in there, that's just the number on the back of the unit. It's like the uh, um, your unit's ID or something like that. So now that we're in here, uh, we're going to go up here to diagnostics and uh, vehicle information. It, it's going to be a little bit different depending on what uh, scan tool or J2534 device you're using. But uh, like I said, you just go into the uh, powertrain and, and look up ECM information or uh, um, something similar on your scan tool and it should give you the same information. Okay, key is on. Yeah, you can see it pulled up all the information in the back there. It says you can turn the key off, but I'm going to leave it on. Uh, so here is our uh, calibration ID here. <clears throat> so hopefully, yeah, they let you copy it. So what I'm going to do is going to go back over to here, and I'm just going to, ah, they won't let you paste it. Okay, so that's not going to work. We're going to have to just go number by number here. Uh, so GGFS, go back over here. Looks like they all start with GGFS, okay, uh, DFU6F, yeah, DFU6F, so all these ones down start with DFU6F, and from there it is S03H00, S03H00 right here, so this is our calibration ID currently in the vehicle. Uh, it is not this guy, so that's a good sign. That means we can program this vehicle. Uh, there is an updated file available. Uh, so to do that, uh, we're going to go and open up the Hyundai programming device or application. Uh, some vehicles need a different, an additional power supply, like a power input to the OBD connector. But on this vehicle, I don't believe it needs it. It's just for the older um, Santa Fe's and Sonatas and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, it doesn't look like it's uh, nothing for our vehicle. So, <laughs> one thing one thing I noticed, too, on some of these, you have to um, 
you have to open the screen right up to be able to see these OK buttons at the bottom. I've run into that before. I've been searching for half an hour for this OK button, and it turns out you have to enlarge the screen, but it uh, looks like you don't have to right now. Okay, so um, I may already have a subscription for these guys because uh, there's a reason I go in to check the IDs now because I, I, did, I did buy a subscription in the past and it uh, wasn't required, so we may still have that sub subscription available. So I'm just going to try programming it and see what happens. So we have the Drew Tech. Actually, you know what? I'm going to close out of this. Make sure you close out of the actual uh, JBox first because it may cause issues. So um, we're going to check our Kardak M there. Click OK. Okay, so it shows that it is updatable here. Uh, now, if it does, if it, if it does take a while, uh, it shows that initializing for several minutes. That's normal. It uh, it does take a couple of minutes. Uh, to find the, the vehicle and everything and get hooked up. So uh, I'm just going to click OK here. Oh, didn't like that. So it wants us to actually select it. Click OK. All right. Uh, it is definitely not a 2017. It's a 2013. So uh, just check to make sure all that is correct. Okay. So new ID is EFU6F. EFU6F. F01H00. F03H00. Okay, so there is. So you notice how it's different. It's uh, it's says here the current available update is uh, F01H00. Then you go here and it says F03H00. That just means that uh, since this TSB was released, there have been two more updates since this uh, TSB has been released. So um, nothing to worry about there. Just as long as it's getting the latest and greatest, that uh, that should be fine. Uh, we've already checked that it does not need a uh, second power supply, so we're going to click OK. Now while it's reprogramming, uh, I forgot to mention earlier, always have a uh, power supply on the battery to make sure the voltage uh, stays at a constant um, uh, I think it's 13.7, 13.5 is what they're happy with, but it, it depends uh, from um, manufacturer to manufacturer, but uh, usually 13.5, 13.7 uh, should suffice. You should want the battery voltage to get uh, too low because on some vehicles they, uh, they actually won't let you program the vehicle uh, with a low battery voltage. And if it gets too low during programming, um, you can actually brick some modules um, and, and actually completely destroy them and need to get a brand new one uh, for it to work. Another good thing to make sure that when you're programming this thing is you don't have any other loads on, so um, no no uh, headlights, radio, HVAC, stuff like that. Just make sure it's all off. Uh, no power consuming devices are on or anything like that. Make sure there's nothing plugged into the cigarette lighter. Um, just make sure that there's uh, nothing causing an extra draw on the battery because that can, that can all affect uh, the programming on, on certain vehicles. Now it's always good practice too to go in and take a look at the vehicles, uh, the vehicle manufacturer's programming description. Uh, make sure that you're not missing any steps. Um, we've done these uh, about a billion times, so uh, I know the the process pretty much uh, off by heart here. So, uh, but uh, for anyone that's not sure or has never done one, it's always good practice just to go and take a look at the vehicle re reprogramming procedure and uh, make sure you're not skipping steps or um, or anything like that, because uh, that can adversely affect the programming and. Uh, actually uh, brick modules as well if you don't do it in the correct sequence or if you don't do it correctly. So we already did have a, um, uh, a subscription for this manufacturer, uh, but normally all you have to do is go to the uh, manufacturer service website and uh, create a login um, and find the programming uh, section and they should allow you to purchase a subscription package which allows you access to the software uh, to download into the uh, module. Okay, it uh, appears that we are finished now. Um, so we're going to follow the on-screen instructions. So we want to turn the ignition off for 30 seconds. Make sure everything powers down. It appears that it has.
Okay, it's been about 30 seconds. We're gonna turn the ignition back on. Uh, one important thing is, says down here, do not click the OK button until the ignition is cycled. That's very important. It can mess up the programming procedure if you click OK before the ignition is cycled. Uh, so we've already done that. I'm gonna turn the ignition back on. I'll have to hit it twice to get uh, the vehicle to power up. Now that that's completed, we're gonna click the OK button. And we have a message that says completed, a new ROM ID, and that is the new ID that it showed us right here. Okay. And once you're done, you just gotta go in and uh, clear the DTCs. Uh, so you just do that with any scan tool. Um, sometimes the J2534 toolbox for your uh, J box will work, uh, but it's just usually easier with a scan tool to go in and do that. Get our little success message there, it means everything went good. And I'm just going to open up the toolbox and see if it does allow us to erase codes from there. And no, we'll update that later. All right, so we're just gonna go, I'm gonna go back in here again, just to make sure that it all went good. And uh, even though it says it went okay, I just like to double check. So that is the same number, EFU6FF03H00. That is the correct one that we just put in here. So it looks like the programming went fine. I'm gonna go over here. Okay, it does allow me to read and clear DTCs. So we'll just see if any any set. Sometimes you won't have any that's set, sometimes you do, it just depends on the vehicle. So, in this case, we did not set any codes, so uh, there's no need to clear anything. Uh, so that, that's pretty much all there is to it. It doesn't, uh, it's it's not really that hard once you do a couple of them. The first couple can be a little nerve-wracking, but uh, once you get a couple under your belt, there's uh, there's nothing to them. They're, they're actually pretty easy. So, I uh, hope this video helped uh, anybody out there that's trying to do this. Uh, and until next time, we'll see you later.